everybody you know it may surprise some of you that one of my favorite tv shows growing up was angel now i wasn't really huge into buffy the vampire slayer i was definitely an angel fanboy i wore the trench coat and everything in high school until high school banned trench coats because of certain incidents that happened at schools but anyway i'm gonna rank the seasons of angel from worst to best I love this show. I can't wait to rank it and show you why I love this show. But honestly, this is going to be a pretty easy ranking because there's only one horrendously bad season of Angel. And the sad fact of that is it's still enjoyable even though it's kind of bad or horrendously bad. There's still elements out of the season that's really fun to watch. So let's get things started and let's start ranking this shit. Angel, from worst to best, let's go! <laughs> the worst is season four. And good God almighty, is there a lot wrong with season four? <laughs> There's the monster that comes in that nobody can beat and for like fucking eight episodes he is completely fucking unkillable and then there is Cordy being a villain in this season but that's not at all what the worst portions of this season is no the worst portions of this season is one character yes one fucking character that I hate that makes me cringe every time I see his fucking pussy face on screen and that is Connor fucking Connor the son of Angel is the worst character out of any Buffy or Angel verse you name it he is complete shit he's annoying he's whiny he's a pussy and I know, oh well, he went through a bad raisings of fighting demons and whatnot. I don't give a fuck. He is horrible. He is easily one of the worst characters in television. Like, I would rather watch anything with Fat Amy's actress in it than watch anything with Connor. I'd rather watch anything with Melissa McCarthy than watch Connor. Oh, God. God, and I shouldn't try to be mean, because this is a kid actor, a relatively kid actor at the time, but it's awful, and the story plots they use with him are just fucking terrible. Okay, he comes back from time after Wesley sends him in time to save him to kill Angel. Then he spends the entire time of that season trying his damnest to kill Angel, but instead he joins with Angel. Then Angel starts falling in love with Cordelia, but so does Connor. And guess what? This young 17 or 18 year old boy ends up fucking Cordelia and knocking her ass up. Yeah, you get where the Oedipus story is coming. Cordelia, who has basically raised Connor... Uh, when or helped take care of Connor at this point he comes back and has an Oedipus moment and fucks her what the fuck dude then after all that awfulness is over thank Christ another villain shows up at the end and she is actually trying to control the city but only certain people can see her true ugliness, and at least Connor has a shining moment there. He can see it, but he has seen so much evil in the world that he just doesn't care. He accepts it. It's normal to him. That's the only moments I like. But, yeah, season four, good God, this is a season that I like to skip when re-watching the entire series. It is easily the worst. I mean... They really fished at the bottom of the toilet in this season. And honestly, that's about it. Those complaints with Connor are the only thing that really plagued this season. And 
uh, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, there's some other stuff that I didn't care for, like Cordelia's character being fucked up a little bit here and there. But you know what? It all goes uphill from here. After this blemish of a season, season four, it all starts moving uphill. And I can start ranking the others as we go on. Mandy, well you came and you gave without taking. But I sent you away, oh Mandy. Season two is the season that I call setting up the other characteristic arcs. There's a lot of fun in this one. In fact, some of my favorite moments is just the episodic moments, especially with Angel himself. One of my favorite moments has to be where they get sent back into another dimension and we're introduced to one of my favorite characters named Fred. Normally in this season, it's basically the Darla season is what I call it. The Darla and Drusilla season where Angel goes completely emo and starts fighting the Darla and Drusilla himself and then fights the lawyer group Wolfram and Hart. It's a fun series though and I don't care. Though there are some moments in the season that kind of just stick out to me and bug me. Like Angel just letting Darla and Drusilla kill all the lawyers in the office. I mean that is not an Angel moment. No matter how he says that he's not going to save them, he's still causing their death. And as fucked up as it is, yeah, that's what's going on. He's causing all their deaths. Angel kind of gets put on the back burner in this season, but he still gets to redeem himself in the later half. Plus, two of my favorite characters get introduced here. Lorne, a karaoke bar-owning demon that can read people's aura, when they sing, and Fred, who is probably one of the best female protagonists in TV history. I like her almost as much as Cordelia. And the chemistry in the cast just works wonders here, especially with Wesley, Angel, Cordelia, and Lorne, Gunn. Everybody here is fun. And another fun fact is Gunn gets to become part of the main group in this season. He gets put in the credit sequences, so it's a win-win here. I really enjoy this one a lot. There's, It's just mindless, episodic fun, but hey, it is what it is. It is definitely worthy of this spot, and I'm going to leave it here, right at this spot. Too bad we'll never know. If this is a face you could learn to love. Next is Season 1, and I know a lot of people are probably like, Season 1? What the hell, dude? Season 1's the weakest. To me, I think Season 1 is one of the strongest. We get a good basis of the story. The first, uh, what, 9 or 10 episodes are really excellent. And I've got to say, one of my favorite characters starts out in the season, Doyle. P portrayed by Glenn Quinn was fantastic. And when he gets, and I'm going to say spoilers for everyone, when his character gets killed off, it is all the more tragic and heartbreaking. Doyle starts off as a coward and kind of Angel's sidekick, but he became even much more than that when he gets some of his own story arcs fulfilled. One of my favorite things about him is his apparent crush on Cordy, which is just great and how awkward it is and why he wants to keep the demon side of himself secret because he's actually ashamed of it. It just works. And the first nine episodes are very different than any of the other Angel episodes. This would have been a completely different series if I believe Doyle stayed in the show, but as sad as it is, and he is probably my second favorite character out of the entire group of Angel for only having nine episodes, I think we got a really good balance. There are some really memorable episodes in this one. And on top of that, we get quite a bit. Even after Doyle's death, it is hard to replicate Doyle entirely. He gets replaced with Wesley who is comedic at first, but he starts to change the more the show goes on. This one is basically the season is playing on comedy. There are some really good memorable episodes, like I was saying, 
like Angel getting to be human for at least one full episode. But then he finds out he can't fight, and he can't save the world like he needs to. So he goes back to being a demon. And you get a little more hints to the powers that be in this too. I mean, I think structurally this is one of the best seasons. And like I said with season two, it's mindless fun. I mean, those first nine episodes are memorable in my opinion. And then the buildup after Doyle's death is really great too. We get a lot of... Well, kind of foreshadowing to a certain character's return who doesn't come in until after the season, but we get this character in a lot of flashbacks, and it just is kind of a perfect match. And I've got to say, this has to be one of the best season finales that the show has done yet. It is so much better than one. I, I mean, one is so much better than four or two. It just kind of had a different setting, and I would have loved to have seen the tone with it. But let's move on to the next season, because I keep on dick riding on this one. Let's go to the next ranking. You think I forgive you? Never! You're gonna die, you hear me? You're gonna pay! Hey! Hey. (laughs) Season 3, again, is fantastic. Even the stuff with Darla uh, is great, too. It basically starts out where it leaves off, but there are some things in it that I don't like. We get Diet Cola Angel, which is the human guy that hooks up with Cordy in the other dimension, which just, I hate this character, and I wish somebody would have staked him so he could have had a very painful death. And we get... A lot of good episodes out of this total though I will say the season finale is really weak in this season especially with Connor being brought in but hey in this season at least through the middle ground we find out that Angel got Darla pregnant and they she has a baby and she's carrying it the first vampire that is able to be pregnant and it works out on so many levels here the build-up to it is nice too And then afterwards, after she has the baby, you see Angel trying to find ways to provide for it as he's trying to cope with his true feelings of his love for Cordelia. And at first, I wasn't for shipping Cordelia and Angel together because I thought it would be so cliche that the two closest friends are going to be in love now, but it worked. Until around the end of the season, when for some fucking reason Cordelia gets lifted into the light... But, however, this season is just really good. And the end, middle end here, where Wesley betrays Angel and sends Connor onto another realm, is fantastic writing, too. I like that Wesley gets overly paranoid about Angel eating his baby. Darla gives birth in the rain, and the only way she can save the baby is by dying, so he has to stake her when giving birth. Those are all fantastic moments. Season 3 is almost a golden season. I like the chemistry also with the other characters too. Wesley, Fred, and Gunn's love triangle is beautifully done. And how she ends up picking Gunn is great. Lorne even gets a good episode in this season. Lorne finally gets to be in the season credits in this season. So it kind of worked out. Lorne is amazingly one of my favorite characters too. And I just keep going on and on about 3. 3 is great, but you know what? I saved the best for last, and it happens to be the last. Well, personally, I kind of want to slay the dragon. Let's go to work. And the best season has to go to season 5. After the horrible disaster of season 4... Season 5 gets to redeem itself, and it gets to become even better than anything else. And not only that, we're brought in with some more characters from Buffy. Spike comes back to the show, and they could have really fucked this up. The dude had a heroic sacrifice, and then he gets killed off in the Buffyverse. However, he gets to come back due to some 
decent writing, I guess, and how they could have handled him as being in one of the main branches of the show is they could have had this end up really badly enforced, but it's not. It's very natural. Spike's inclusion just fucking worked for me. You also get the puppet episode, which is fucking awesome. This one is my second favorite episode of Angel when he's a fucking puppet. Oh, God, I love this season. There is only one bad episode out of this entire season, and storylines get resolved, too. We actually get to see Wesley become more of a badass, and you get to see him lose his love tragically and how it eats away at him. Fred's character becomes a more stronger force named Illyria, and it's just heartbreaking that she gets to be Fred's replacement at that. And I think the reason that Illyria was actually created was because everyone loved Amy Acker's performance so much as Fred, they did not want to part with the actress. It's the same reason that John Locke's actor, Terry O'Quinn, became the man in black at the time. They did not want to part with such good acting chops. A lot of episodes are very memorable, too. Um, one of the Baldwin brothers is in this, and he's one of the main villains. And he is easily one of my favorite main villains out of TV history. He's so over-the-top and fucking mean that he's fantastic. And then we get other storylines, like Angel himself is now the head of Wolfram and Hart. And if you remember me talking about Wolfram and Hart in the other ranking of the seasons, it's an evil law firm that was trying to use Angel to basically take control and have some kind of hell on earth revelation going on. Anyway, that's the vibe I get from Wolfram and Hart. We get another character return, Lindsay, who goes from being a decent guy to being the main villain again and has his final fight with Angel, but he doesn't die. In fact, how he dies is just so tragic and so hilarious at the same time. It's just fucking perfect. And then we have probably one of the best television finales that has ever ever been done in Angel history, or TV history, ever. It's very similar to the Sopranos ending finale, but it, you can actually see what happens at the end through comic books. But the very final episode is Angel's greatest episode, and basically the moral to it is right is right, and sometimes you have to do what you have to do, no matter what the cost or the sacrifices. There are some deaths in this episode that is extremely heartbreaking. There are moments that you just want to lay down and cry with some of the characters, especially for Wesley. This season is just so beautifully done, and this is perfection. TV perfection, especially for Angel. The acting is all on point. Cordelia actually gets a decent goodbye in this besides the shafting that she got in season four everything about this season just works perfectly except for that shitty ass wrestling episode fuck that episode that episode sucked but if there was ever a way to get people to watch angel i would show them a few episodes from this season all the characters are utilized perfectly everyone has their own story arcs and it ends so beautifully a lot of people call the ending to Season 5 a cop-out, but I don't. Basically, it leaves you on this giant cliffhanger, but it's symbolizing that no matter what you do, no matter how much you fight, true evil will always remain in the world, no matter how hard or how much you push yourself. And Season 5 just captures the essence of everything and it is worthy of being the best season out of the entire series. And that's it for this one. Well, that's it for this video. As you guys can tell, I'm a big Angel fan, and I really love the series. I think maybe on the next Friday video that I upload, I'll most likely be doing a video of my top 10 favorite Angel episodes. So join back on that one if you like Angel. Let me know in the comments. And if you have any more suggestions for TV show rankings, 
like I said, comments. Always remember, I'm listening. Hello, this is Corey Feldman. Welcome to my studio here in Los Angeles, California. And I just wanted to pop in to say congratulations to Tim. Mr. Tim, I hope everybody's enjoying your videos. He's got some great content. And if you're enjoying his content, make sure you click on that little button right there that says subscribe. Why? Because everything on his channel is Bossa Nova. That's right. Congratulations on your channel, Mr. Tim. I'll be following you, and I know everybody else will too.